First off, I want to thank Zeb and Jaden for a lovely job. Uh, not an easy job this morning, but it was done well, and it's something that we all need to remember. So thank you. Can we hear it again? As I was making my doing some explorations on the web in pre preparation for this for talking this morning, I ran into a sermon by Rabbi Lauren Lori Green, who until recently was the rabbi of Congregation Bet Mishpacha in Washington D.C. Bet Mishpacha means House of the Family, and uh, I want to share a couple of uh, a little bit of. What, Rev what Rabbi Lori Green had to say in that sermon. Uh, like every good preacher, she begins with a good, st uh, a good story that's a little bit on the funny side. And this is the story. One day, the world's leading astronomers spotted a comet and predicted that in four days, it would strike the Arctic, melting the glaciers and leaving 90% of the land on Earth covered with water. Evangelical pastors got on television and urged all, true, all unbelievers to accept Christ and prepare to die in a state of grace. The Pope got on television and implored all Catholics to take communion and to surrender to their suffering as Jesus did on the cross. The Dalai Lama got on television and implored all Buddhists to meditate and prepare to, to, to accept death in peace. The Grand Mufti got on television and implored all Muslims to surrender to the will of Allah. The chief rabbis of Israel got on television and said, my people, we have only four days to learn how to live underwater. Um, Rabbi Green's sermon, really the topic of her sermon is, where do we find the strength to deal with adversity with the horrible things that sometimes happen in the world around us. And the title of her sermon is Surrender. And she talks about surrendering to God's love as the most essential thing to do in dealing with adversity, with the challenges, the hard things in life. She says, the real power for, de for dealing with adversity is in surrender, in acknowledging the reality that is God. We give God our will, and God gives us true power. Now, she says, God is a tricky word. Some of us don't feel comfortable with that term for good reason. You may call it physics. You may call it chance. You may imagine boundless love, or you may imagine a puppet master up in the sky. Sometimes God is simply a name for reality. If God is reality, surrender to God is acting in harmony with reality. Surrender is not giving up or giving in. It's giving way. In that surrender, we receive freedom from the struggle and we hope in the possible. When we surrender, we find serenity. When we surrender, we accept the world as it is so we can change it into the world as it ought to be. Surrender means doing what is right and letting go of the results. I have to admit that I still myself find the idea of surrender a challenge when, when faced with things like the horror of the Holocaust or the mass shootings that have happened six times in California in the last few days or the brutal beating to death of a young man in Memphis a few days ago. That makes me, it's, it's hard to think about surrender when we're faced with those kinds of realities in the world around us. But Rabbi Green isn't taught, when she talks about surrender, she's not saying, it's not like I give up in the face of an enemy. She's talking about surrendering to God's way of love. That is, surrendering, giving up our ego, giving up our self-centeredness, and letting God be in charge. It's what all the religions tell us about. And 
You know, it is hard to think about surrender when we're faced with violence, with the kinds of things we've seen happening recently in the last few days. And for me, sometimes it's hard to speak up for love as the answer to violence. Because I have to struggle with my own anger when I see people hurting others. And especially when it's harm to children or defenseless people or when it's ganging up and bullying, which is, and, and what happened in Memphis is an example of that. You know, in my, when I was your age, when I was in my late teens and early 20s, I was a pretty angry guy. It was the Vietnam era. It was the era of Vietnam and the 60s civil rights movement. And I was so angry at this country for the, for the war in Vietnam because it was so wrong. And I was so frustrated about racial injustice because I grew up in the time when it was still, there was still legal segregation in the South. Um, and I was so angry that I was, in some ways, I was behaving kind of self-destructively. And I guess the best proof of that is I once spent three nights in jail for doing something that I was too stupid not to do. And not long after that, God showed up and said, Jim, take a good look at yourself. Take a good look at what you're doing with your life. And change your heart. And God filled my heart with love. He filled my heart that had been so angry. He filled it with love and joy and a strength that I can't even begin to, to describe. So I know a lot of you have doubts about God, and it's appropriate for when you're when, when you're in your teen years, it's good to be asking those questions. But I can tell you this, when the Spirit of God comes into your life and changes your heart, you will never, ever, ever doubt the reality of that Spirit again. You can question the name of God, you can question everything that's been said about God, you can question what Christians or others have done in the name of God, and believe me, God knows Christians have done some awful stuff over the, the centuries. And I can't tell you anything very accurate about God because God's beyond our ability to understand, to grasp, or to describe. But God is love. And God's love can take us over and give us the ability to love in a way we can't imagine before that. God gives us the opportunity to be changed by love, to be changed for good. Rabbi Green says, Judaism acknowledges that surrender is not the whole spiritual path. It must be balanced with perseverance and endurance. God's love allows us to persevere against all odds. Uh, I, th I think what Rabbi Green is saying is, is really the same thing that Another Jewish rabbi said, his name was Yeshua, or Jesus, said 2,000 years ago, he said, it's all summed up in this, love God and love your neighbor. All the rest is commentary. And it's also summed up in the quote that we heard, that we read this morning from Martin Luther King Jr. Only through an inner spiritual transformation do we gain the strength to fight vigorously the evils of the world in a humble and loving spirit. So yeah, the world around us is its really imperfect. There's no question. It's beautiful, but it's really imperfect. And our human world and our own, most, our own hearts are imperfect also. Beautiful, wonderful, full of joy and great things, but also sometimes anger, hate, and violence. And the only way that can change is through love. We need to work to change laws, to change rules, to change the way our society works. And we need to be committed to make our society more fair. But as, as, as Martin Luther King pointed out over and over again, the change has to begin with love, with each of us opening our hearts to love and letting love be the way. So I'm a pretty old guy. I'm not going to be around on this earth all that much longer. 
I've had my time in the sun. I hope that in my time, I've made at least a little difference for good. And if I have, it's, it's a pretty little difference. Mother Teresa said, each of us is only one drop in the ocean, but without that drop, the ocean wouldn't be the same. Well, I hope, I hope my drop has been a little bit useful. Very soon, in fact, starting today, it's gonna be your turn, you younger folks. We, this nation, this world, needs a new birth of leadership grounded in the spirit of love. We need a new Sojourner Truth, a new Martin Luther King. We need a new prophet of love. I hope one of you is the prophet that we need. Whether, but in any case, whether you're that new great leader or just a drop in the ocean like me, do what you can to make this better, to make this world better and do it with love. Open your heart and let love in. Let love be the way. Amen. I love you all. Thank you so much. God bless you.